Hi and welcome to this short video about variables. Now none of this information today should be brand new. It should be a bit of a recap from last year, but it's really important that you understand what variables are because we're going to be including this kind of vocabulary um, in the next few videos. So, the types of variables we're going to talk about today, number one, the independent variable, number two, the dependent variable, and then lastly we're going to talk about some extraneous variables in experiments. So, our independent variable in an experiment is the variable, the thing, that is manipulated and changed. Okay, whereas the dependent variable is used to measure the effects of the change in the IV. Okay, so if you ever get stuck, just keep in the back of your mind this phrase that the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. Okay? This all sounds very wordy, but once you start looking at scenarios, it gets a little bit easier to understand. So with that in mind, we have a research experiment on the left here where um, a researcher is studying the effect that sleep has on aggression. Okay, so some people sleep six hours a night, some people sleep for three, some whatever they like, and then she measures their level of aggression. Okay, so in this situation, the independent variable is the hours of sleep. But you can see that that's the variable that she's changing because she wants to see if that has an impact on aggressive behavior. Okay, that then makes our dependent variable aggression. Okay. Um, and if you keep that phrase in the back of your mind, so the um, dependent variable depends on the independent variable, that works here as well. So we've got aggression depends on the hours of sleep, and that's what she's hypothesized as well. Okay, so um, extraneous variables. So this is any variable other than the independent variable that can cause a change in the dependent variable. Now these are bad. If, you, if you're conducting an experiment, you don't want a lot of these because they really affect your results. Okay, um, It means that it's hard to conclude that any changes have actually happened because of the independent variable rather than something else. So if we were having that um, sleep experiment, um, those who got six hours of sleep, if they were put up in a hotel, whereas those who got three hours sleep were you know, just put on the floor on a mattress made of, um, I don't know, hay or something, that variable of where they're sleeping, that's an extraneous variable and it's going to impact their results. Obviously, you're not going to sleep very well if you're on the floor. Okay? Now, there are three different types of extraneous variables. Number one, participant. Number two, situational. And number three, experimenter effects. So, participant variables, these are also called subject variables. And these are extraneous variables to do with the people involved. Okay, so the, the participants, um, and it's what they bring with them to the experiment. So things like their age, their gender, their motivation, are they willing to be there, what do they already have believe about the experiment? And the researcher tries to control these by ensuring the participants um, who are randomly allocated to the different groups are as similar as possible. Okay, so obviously um, random assignment here really helps to try and eliminate or reduce uh, participant variables, um, and also having a really large sample size, it's things that we've talked about before. Okay, placebo effect. So sometimes um, a participant's response is kind of influenced by what they think they're expected to do or what they um, are expecting might happen. So in this case, the placebo effect is sometimes used because the researcher wants to find out is it because they think it's going to work that it's worked or is it that the thing we're testing has actually worked um, and there's quite a lot of um, history to do with this so if you're interested follow the link um, but yeah that's basically the placebo effect when you have something working purely because someone believes it's going to work think about um, a little pill someone taking what they think is a Panadol and it might just be a sugar pill and miraculously their headache just goes away right? in experiments to kind of counteract this something called a single blind procedure is used now this is where the participants are blind to the condition that they've been assigned to so when I was an undergrad psych student and I'd have to take part in studies um, I just, you wouldn't know, and I didn't know if I was in the control group or the experimental group. You just walked in, the experiment happened, and then afterwards they'll tell you a little bit about it. All right, situational variables. So like the hay versus hotel room situation I spoke about earlier, this is to do with the actual experiment and how it might affect the results. Okay, again, this is unwanted. All of these extraneous variables are unwanted. So this could be things like the time of day that the results are gathered or the apparatus used to, to get the measure or the air temperature or um, 
the you know the comfort levels of where they are anything that could anything to do with the surroundings that could impact the results now researchers try to control this and avoid it and reduce it um, by really considering them when planning the experiment so going through all of the possible factors that might Im impact the results and making sure that they're either eliminated or minimized in both groups now random assignment also helps with this as well Okay, experimenter effects. So these are effects to do with the actual experimenter themselves, um, whether it's their characteristics or their behaviour that might impact the results. So it could be something like, um, you know, a researcher's conducting a study over a, a week and one day they were just up all night, um, they had an argument with their partner, they're tired, they're in a bad mood, maybe they're not feeling well as well. Could that impact the results in some way? You know, how are they gathering data? Could this impact how they're um, gathering that data? Okay. Um, in this case, a single, uh, sorry, a double blind procedure is used to eliminate these. So this is when not only are the participants blind as to whether they're in the experiment or the control group, but also the, the experimenter is blind. So they don't, when they're gathering um, data from someone, they have no idea which group they're in. And this is really important because it means that um, they can be sure that they haven't impacted those results in any way. Okay, so quick refresh, we looked at the IV, the DV and extraneous variables. And if you would like any more information, as always, please see me or the resources. See you next time.